Okay, so Stuart Gordon's follow-up to Reanimator in 1986 was From Beyond, based on a HP Lovecraft story. Very weird. In fact, let me just show you some of the trailer. Uh, like, I'll just let you see for yourself. Let it happen, Robert. <laughs> Humans are such easy prey. From the makers of Reanimator, from beyond. Welcome to Brand X Reviews, this Halloween special series, our eighth annual series. We've been doing this since 2013. Every year, we do a series of videos leading up to Halloween night itself. Usually, these are thematic, and this year we've gone with 80s horror. So, myself and my co reviewer, uh, sometimes I'll do these on my own, but we've so far done Night of the Creeps, and we did The Monster Squad. Yesterday, I was talking about Reanimator, which was a film by Stuart Gordon starring. Um, I was going to say Barbara Hershey, Barbara Crampton and Jeffrey Combs, directed by Stuart Gordon, the late Stuart Gordon, who passed away quite recently. Obviously, um, Reanimator was based on the H.P. Lovecraft story. In this one, I'm going to be talking about a very similar uh, film that is From Beyond, which is another H.P. Lovecraft story, a very short story, in fact. And uh, this also, like Reanimator, was directed by Stuart Gordon and starred Barbara Crampton and Jeffrey Combs. Um, now this is my favourite one be between this and the Reanimator movies because there's three of those. This is a standalone, but I really prefer this one. I think this one really resonated with me. Um, I may be alone, not alone in there, but I may be in a bit of a minority there. Um, describing this film is kind of difficult, so I'm going to do something I wouldn't normally do. I'm going to be a bit lazy. Um, I'm just going to edit into this the Siskel and Ebert review that they did because they really cover the the what the film is about and they also show a few clips as well and give a few opinions. So I'm going to cut to that. We're going to come back and then I'm just going to give you my thoughts on this. So uh, I think that's probably the best thing to do. Shut it off. Never. Can't you feel it? Robert, in the mind. The mind. You've got to turn it off! No! No! No, I want to see more. More than any man has ever seen. Edward! It's running itself! Later, another scientist, a pretty young woman, also becomes interested in the mad doctor's machine, and against the assistant's best advice, she rushes to plug it in again. now what I was creating. The key to a new realm of sensation. Edward, my God, what have you become? Ah, yes, the price you have to pay for knowledge. From Beyond has a lot of what many people might find to be gross scenes in it. I find it to be sort of <laughs> gross, too. I mean, sucking out of eyeballs, again, being swallowed by monsters, and then wiggly little worms, that's those, the enlarged pineal glands, popping through people's skulls. I like the way they just sort of float around like that and some unnecessary <laughs> kinky sex. And yet I found <laughs> well, the movie... Well, to be well, what can be unnecessary about kinky sex in a movie that you've already described with slimy monsters eating people and little worms well, sticking it's just out of Well, your... it's just taking it into a new territory. Oh, we territory. don't want it to go too far. Well, right? Not too far. Okay. Not too far. Actually, this movie is great fun. You can already tell he's laughing at it. I found the movie to be so cleanly told by director Stuart Gordon and so forcefully acted in that last scene by Barbara Crampton and Jeffrey Combs, as well as also earlier Ted Sorrell as Dr. Pretorius, the guy who wants to know more than any man in the world, that I enjoyed this little horror film more than Aliens. It didn't gross me out. It didn't bore me. It tickled me. I think this is a really good little picture. I Well, it has some uh, qualities to it. I like Stuart Gordon's last movie, The Reanimator, yep. a lot better than this one, and I'm not giving this one a thumbs up, although it's marginal. And it does, you're right, have a lot of humor in it and a lot of spirit and some really gory monsters. So what's but bad? I, what's bad? It didn't have the insane tension of the reanimator which led you from beginning to end with that kind of obsession that this movie doesn't have and you're right it digresses uh the scene where she puts on the leather for example exactly. now, why is that scene in there i'll tell you why because stuart gordon probably said when was the last time you saw a woman dressed in leather who was swallowed by a slime worm from outer space okay. not often so that's probably why but i think it's a close call it's certainly not better than aliens uh, well, uh, and that, I think Aliens just was unrelenting. I think this film has a sense of humor about mm -hmm. itself that is great fun, and I think it is forcefully told. Okay. Because I sat there, and I didn't find too many scenes except with that one 
scene which you now agree with is unnecessary kinky sex that one scene was the only glitch in the whole film and when a movie can drive me straight through like that even if it's about silly subjects like those slimy creatures I like it. I will go this far with you I will suggest that Stuart Gordon has a future as a really good director in this genre maybe he can make other kinds of pictures too we don't yeah. know yet and that this picture shows a lot of promise not as good as this first one is that doesn't doesn't make you happy okay so there you go, that was Siskel and Ebert. As you can see, they weren't quite as big a fan of this um, as, as they were uh, the, the Reanimator movie from the year before. So for context, this came out in 1986, Reanimator came out the year before that. Um, evidently, they must have done a review of Aliens quite recently because they actually said that this was better than that, which is crazy. I mean, this is a really good film. I love this film, but Aliens, seriously, that is a high standard but I don't think they like that film anyway, to be honest. But that's just Siskel and Ebert anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I like like I say, this this just really kind of resonated with me. Um, not just the story and the acting and so on, but the actual concept itself and the visuals of the movie. Because um, the Siskel and Ebert review is very good, but obviously I can give a more modern day take on this and put it in context in, in com comparison to a lot of films that come out nowadays. The HP Lovecraft genre has been kind of, in some ways I would say done to death, but in other ways I would say not done enough because I don't think it's had quite the level of mainstream um, attention that it, it should have got. I mean, I know there's been like computer games, there's been a lot of stuff. Like I say, it's been, in a sense it has been done to death, but it would be nice to see maybe something a little bit more at the forefront of what we get in terms of the, the horror genre. Um, having said that, I'm kind of talking rubbish because a lot of the films, like Alien, um, is very much out of Lovecraft, you know, obviously. Like I said in the last video that I was talking about Reanimator, um, it kind of, the, the Lovecraft thing, it deals with not just what the monster's going to do to you, it's going to like eat you and stab you and cut you into pieces. I mean, I could do that. What the Lovecraft monsters do is just just seeing them, just experiencing and, and encountering them is way too much for the human mind to comprehend to the point where it drives you to insanity, just seeing the thing. Um, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't actually read the From Beyond story. In fact, I don't know why I haven't because they're very short, so I think it's like seven pages. Um, but I've read quite a few of the, the, the most early Lovecraft stories, including Dagon. Um, which I think has also been made into a film. I've not seen it, but the the story itself, the the short story that he wrote, is very good, and it pretty much is. I think some people said it was a precursor for the Cthulhu stuff that came later on. But the concept of it is just seeing the thing and encountering it is pretty much like that's what it does to you. It doesn't have to like eat you or whatever. So. Um, the reanimator film whereas that was more to do with zombies this is getting more into your classic um not quite classic like cthulhu but more of your classic tentacle monsters slimy slurping beasts um that want to devour you that kind of thing um, and of course encountering them just kind of makes you just go completely bonkers anyway to the point where it doesn't even need to eat you because you're pretty much screwed anyway just by seeing it. Uh, this film really does kind of get into that and um, what's quite interesting about this is whereas in Reanimator you've got the Jeffrey Combs character who's the mad scientist, the Dr. Frankenstein effectively, the Barbara Crampton character in Reanimator, she's kind of more the victim Roles are kind of reversed in this one. So you've got Barbara Crampton is now the sort of mad scientist. And um, Jeffrey Combs is pretty much the victim in a lot of this. You feel really bad for some of the stuff he goes through. Um, so one other thing as well. One other thing that I really liked about this. Um, Ken Foray is in this. And he was of course in um, Dawn of the Dead. The original film. And he was really good in that. Um, and he's really good in this as well. It's a different sort of character, but he he's in it. He's the kind of the security guy in it, and he's another victim. You kind of feel really bad for him, but he's the one that up to a certain point in the film, he's really kind of holding it together. He's the voice of reason, and he's also got the, he's the one with the strength. He's the one that will have the most strength to resist this thing, because obviously, as you saw from what Siskel and Eva were telling of the story, this thing 
takes you to it doesn't take well it takes you to another dimension but kind of crosses over with another dimension and you start to see all these swirling like eel creatures coming out of nowhere um in fact i don't think the siskel and ebert thing showed that so i'll just show you a very quick clip just so that if you haven't seen the film you'll see exactly what i'm talking about um, here's a quick clip So those kind of things come out of this other dimension that is always there but we can't see and they can't see us but this machine that they've invented obviously stimulates the pituitary gland and allows us to step into that realm but also allows that realm to step into us. Um, Ken Foray is really the, the main guy who up to a point anyway is, is the one that's saying uh, no enough's enough we've got to turn this off we've got to like keep together kind of thing so he's a really good character in this anyway so um obviously shout shout out for him um beyond that it is a low budget film it is a b-movie um not maybe not quite so much as as reanimator this one seems to have a bit more sort of science uh, not science well, well special effects thrown in there as well a little bit more than um reanimator did but it's still very even even for nineteen eighty six. It's it feels a bit low budget, but um, but in a good way because it's it's very creative, very inventive, and obviously the subject material that they're lending from is uh, is from the master himself, H. P. Lovecraft. So they kind of had the work cut out for him when making this film. I don't know what this film would be like if it came out nowadays. Um, I suspect if if the right people did something along the lines with this nowadays, it could be quite a decent film, to be honest. There's a lot of potential. Um, like I say, I know I kind of slate modern-day horror films, but there are some good ones out there. And I think if it was made by the right people who didn't just throw a load of money at it uh, and think that that was the answer, um, I think they could potentially do something good with it. Um, now, one thing I was saying about the reanimator film, the first one, obviously there's there's a bit of sort of sexualization in there when it comes to the, the Barbara Crampton character. Um, it didn't feel too kind of gratuitous because they knew where to draw the line with it. There's a little bit of that in this, but it's, it doesn't quite go as far, but there's some... And, and it's relevant to the story as well, so it's not like it's done for the sake of it. Um, there's some... Well, basically it's part of the film where the, when the pituitary gland gets stimulated and obviously it regulates hormones there's a lot of stuff we don't know about the pituitary gland like the functions of it and so on but um, they also get into the, the sexuality side of things as to how that gets boosted and the Barbara Crampton character starts to get a bit um, a bit of a fetish just going on where she'll just basically screw anything uh, I think I've met quite a few girls like that in the past but uh, in this case, obviously, she's got quite good reason to be because she's uh, been exposed to this thing that's really kind of like stimulated her beyond her own control. So she starts to lose the plot a little bit. And uh, it gets a little bit creepy at times as well, where you're thinking, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being alone with her. But then you're kind of thinking, but then again, under the circumstances, you really wouldn't want to be, it wouldn't be worth it. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting mixture of... Um, ideas and you know where they kind of go with it as well so without giving like I don't want to give too many spoilers away because I would suggest watch this um, I could get into what happens the exact plot of the thing but I don't want to I don't want to ruin it because if you haven't seen it I quite liked watching this for the first time as well because I didn't quite know what to expect because this is another one that I hadn't seen until quite recently i do remember seeing this in a in a video library with video tapes back in like the late 80s when i was about eight or nine and the cover of it was very different to this this is this kind of a crap cover to be quite honest can, can, in fact i can show you what the actual cover was it was um it was this that was the actual video cover that is scary as hell it kind of reminds me of the thing from the thing uh you know when when they find the um the remains from the Norwegian camp and it's like two faces kind of like melted together it's kind of like that but that is like scary 
Um, and it does kind of come across that way in the film as well. But if I'd have seen this as a kid, it would have um, it would really shit me up. I kind of regret not having seen this as a kid as well because, I mean, if you compare it to something like The Thing, I did see that when I was quite young and I loved it, just like the concept of it and the way it was made. Um, that was a film I used to watch like all the time. It was one of my favourites and remains that. I think with this, if I'd have watched this when I was like 12 or 13, I would have loved it. I would have understood it and I would have really liked it. So um, seeing this for the first time as an adult was kind of a bit of a treat because there's lots of films like The Thing I would love to watch again for the first time. So um, if you haven't seen this, give it a watch. You might not be as enthusiastic about it as me. Um, I wouldn't say it's a 10 out of 10 film. I'd probably give it, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10, which... It's quite high, maybe seven and eight. Eight seems a bit generous, but I think it was um, just everything that they did and really did seem to capture my understanding of HP Lovecraft within the limitations of the scope of the film, you know, the budget and all that kind of stuff. And it is very difficult to translate Lovecraft stuff onto the big screen. Uh, it can be done, but it's not easy. So um, I think in this instance, I think, I think with in that context, I would give it an eight out of ten. So I uh, definitely want to watch. I could ramble on. I'm going to cut this short anyway. Um, there's going to be more videos coming out leading up to Halloween night itself. Um, hopefully get a couple more out there. But I'm not going to tell you what they are. So obviously check back tomorrow night on the channel. And um, we'll, we'll continue this 80s horror classics theme for Brandix Reviews. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. But for now, I'll leave it there and say thank you very much for watching. Right then, just a quick reminder that you can follow us on social media. Obviously, the channel exists on YouTube. We've been going strong since 2013. But we also have presence on Facebook as well, where we occasionally post updates and news on there. We also have Instagram. We don't really use it quite as much, but you can always follow us there if you're desperate. Uh, but beyond that, Brandex Reviews, news reviews and retrospectives coming out of the UK.